Awesome. Thanks for joining us on a Saturday afternoon, three o'clock, to talk about mm -hmm. Zinfandel. And I'm going to like pour some wine over here in the corner that you can't see. You might hear it. I apologize. But I'm going to let Craig tell us a little bit. He's going to start us off on uh, all the wonderful yes, things about um, Zinfandel. Welcome, everyone. Um, most of you know me. I'm a sommelier here in New Brunswick and wine writer and booze, otherwise booze drinker. Uh, I, Zinfandel was a fun one to choose because it was the kind of the first red wine that I kind of got into for whatever reason. Um, maybe when I was new to premium wine, I was uh, impressed by something that was really uh, approachable and full flavored because Zinfandel is a, what I call like a juicy grape. It's not tannic. It's, uh, it's um, more of a fruit forward wine. I don't know, maybe it was the high alcohol, I don't know, perhaps. Uh, but um, I got into it and in my early trips to California, uh, drank a lot of Zinfandel and eventually um, got, to, got to go to Zap, which is the big Zinfandel festival, which if you are interested in wine at all, you'd like it, even if you're not a Zin freak. It's just this crazy thing in San Francisco with hundreds and hundreds of wines and it's just a big party and lots of Zinfandel drinking. But uh, I got really into it and I used to host Zin with Zin parties, which were just wine tastings, don't get that wrong. Uh, and just uh, get people to bring Zinfandels. And I, I had some some of the best ones in those days. I used to have a few old ridges in my cellar, which ridge were, I used to always say it was the R's, Ridge and Ravenswood, and what was the other one? Anyway, there's another R. But uh, the, uh, maybe Rosen one? But uh, the, these big famous producers. So Zinfandel is an interesting grape. It's, um, Charlotte's gonna talk a bit about the, where it comes from, but, and it's, it's family. But in California, it, it, came, it came there, well, they came to the U.S. sometime in the early 1800s, they think from Austrian stock to the East Coast, and eventually ended up getting into the, um, the West Coast, like in the late 18 or the mid 1800s. And when phylloxera, the root louse that kills a lot of vines, when it decimated uh, California vineyards, and then they replanted afterwards, a lot of Zinfandel was, was planted. Perhaps it was hardy or whatever. But uh, it, at one point, I know I saw in the stats that it was a, a one third of all the vines in the United States were Zinfandel. And uh, it became popular um, as a, the, amongst the Italian, a lot of Italian people like Mondavi, that's an Italian name, but a lot of different families grew Zinfandel. And because it did well in the sort of easy bush pruning technique as opposed to the trellis training. So it was easy for them to grow. And uh, it makes, you know, pretty f uh, approachable, fun wines. But it, Zinfandel didn't really become a crazy like household name until White Zinfandel came along, which, you know, it's kind of a dirty word amongst wine lovers uh, who are serious about wine. But I think it was uh, 19, early 19, 1970, 71, something like that, where uh, the, the Sutter home, which we also know as Trinchero, same family, really big and they make everything from budget wine to super high quality wines. They had a, a it's a famous story where there was a stock fermentation and they, they didn't get the reds in it. It basically, they, it, they got a sweet pink and, and then they decided just, they tasted it. Oh, it's actually pretty good. And then they sold it and it became a phenomenon. And, you know, between that time and uh, I think the early eighties kind of thing, it was the number one selling kind of premium wine, if you want to call it that in the United States, uh, their Sutter Home White Zinfandel, which is still a big brand now. So Zin got a big bump from that and they made a lot of money. Um, and then a lot of producers make White Zinfandel to make cash. And then what's happened is that because of it, you got money and now you can make premium wine. So a lot of, nowadays you've got a lot of Zinfandel specialists who um, make seri more serious Zinfandel. And Ravenswood was one I mentioned, which we'll talk about when I taste it in a bit. I'm already tasting it. But uh, Ridge and Ravenswood and a few others. And now there's tons of specialists. Like at Zap, I was overwhelmed. I mean, overwhelmed because there's so many to taste, but also you've probably noticed, although this Ravenswood I have here is not a typically high alcohol, a lot of the Zins are 16 plus, and that's natural alcohol. They're not adding booze to it. In fact, they de-alcoholize a lot of it because this grape gets so ripe. And it's one of those grapes that even when it's really ripe, um, it doesn't get overripe to the point of, of losing its freshness. It has a natural acidity. So it's some, I, I understood from being there that they sometimes have to dealkalize from almost 20% alcohol and take it down to, to a level where you can actually drink it as now, a Now, Craig, so in the dealkalization yeah. of things, do they typically, um, is that found in just like California Zins? Yeah, I, th I think California, not just Zins, everything. Like there are a lot of wines that are de-alcoholized in California. 
there's a whole there's a whole business every everything if the alcohol is they, they want to be in that there's a certain spot where wine is in balance and if it's above that they'll dealcoholize it there's a you'll see the tankers going off there's plate they send it off to a uh, companies that specialize and i think they use the what do you call it centrifuge technique is the most common and then they would dealcoholize say what it's it's uh, 17 you want 15 and a half okay i, I see a few people have rest. posted their percentages. Uh, Helen has said yeah. 15 and a half. Leah's got something that's 13.8. Um, it's only 13 and a half. I mean, they're allowed Craig? to lie. I say lie. I mean, they're allowed to be off by, I think, one or one and a half percent, something like that. But it, I'll tell you what. 13.2 as well. Yeah, he's, but 16, 17 is super common there when you're in Cali. And mm -hmm. you know what's surprising about them is because they do have that, that kind of fresh berry acidity to them and that kind of an herbal, they call it brambly character, which I, makes me think of blackberry bushes. Like we used to have it in my folks' property in the old days, they're not there anymore. But the, that kind of that, that, uh, that sort of flavor, it mm -hmm. seems, seems to be able to handle the high alcohol and uh, that makes it a dangerous wine. Okay. But uh, yeah, so that, that's kind of the story. Like now there's this whole range of premium table wines and Fendel's, even though of course White Zinfandel is still, you know, the, the breadwinner, if you will, in California wine. Now we, we do have a, a couple people drinking um, Big Boys, which is about 14%. And then we have someone who has joined us that is um, actually not drinking a Zin, which is totally okay, but their percentage is up to 13.5. Yeah. I think that Liar's Dice is pretty boozy, isn't it? No? Oh yeah, that one is Helen's and she had it, I think 15.5%. It yeah. It's delicious. <laughs> No, I've had that Excellent. wine before. Can you yeah. show a picture of yeah, that yeah, bottle, sure. Helen? What's unique to Zinfandel that we should notice in, in these wines? I mean, typical flavor, I think. Do you want to yeah, take that one, Craig? Uh, structure? Well, normally I would say uh, Zinfandel, as I said before, is more of a fruit forward okay. wine. But, and, and it also it should have, so it should have like berry fruit and it should have good acidity. So like a, a kind of a fresh, you notice that on the finish and not so much tannins. So usually with, with big red wines, it's tannins that are the, the balance to the fruitiness or the, in some cases, the winemakers told, told me when I was at the Zin thing, there's a thing that they call Zin dry. So there's dry red wine and then there's Zin dry, which is a few percentages higher in residual okay. sugar. So they allow, I mean, part of that I suppose is keeping the alcohol somewhat in check by not fermenting it as dry. But, so you should get that berry fruit and there should be that brambly kind of, I think of it as like a, or more herbal or peppery than not spicy like, um, close cinnamon type thing that you get in some wines from that's usually from oak but this is just from right. a grape not that they're not oak sometimes but a lot of, a lot of zins aren't oak. okay thank you yeah so charlotte you're going to talk a little bit about the other grapes there's a lot of controversy about the other grapes that, that zinfandel came from or is the same as or whatever yeah and uh in terms of uh the zin that you're having from ravenswood that's from Lodi, well actually correct? this one is a is uh their california so it's a blend of from all, this is their budget one. Okay. And I know it's 20 bucks here. And when you're in California and you go to, as some of you know, you go to the grocery store, you can find it in the bins for nine ninety nine or whatever. Right. But uh, the Ravens would also make a bunch of premium zins, like you say, from, they have all these range of expensive sing, uh, mm -hmm. single vineyards, which are incredible. They're fantastic. Right. Ones. This is very good for a basic, basic one too. Nice. Um, so I'm going to apologize because originally I was set up so that I was looking directly at my computer and I'm trying to look at my phone, but like, so if I look like I'm like kind of all over the place, I apologize for that. Um, in terms of California and Zinfandel, they're usually like, you think California is really hot, Lodi specifically, it's really desert. So these do become incredibly ripe. Ripe means sugar content's high, sugar converts into alcohol, the alcohol becomes high, which then goes back to what Craig was saying and that some of the wines will then be de-alcoholized. Now, um, I don't know if I've ever danced wine regardless, but I have been known to share the meme of friends don't let friends drink yeah. white Zinfandel. And that's kind of where, you know, it first got its, uh, you know, name was in those uh, semi-sweet rosé, some fruit in it with some sparkling water, maybe an ice cube or two. <laughs> <laughs> a bunch of ice cubes, yeah. Um, but in terms of Zinfandel, I, there was a lot of controversy on um, the other side of the globe. And having Primitivos are more, uh, they're from Puglia, so that's, if you, if you know Italy, that's kind of like that. You're coming down and it's like the boot 
kind of the heel, the back of the boot section. And uh, I was like, just looking for a map so that I was like correct in that. <laughs> and it's in the southern part of Italy in that same line as Sicily, really hot. It gives them huge potential to ripen, to um, really increase the, the same grape. I feel like the jury's still out on that. You'll have people that it's different clones and things, but they are very similar. Um, today, I chose a wine that's a little bit different, an idea is uh, jumped on, and we're actually having the same wine. Oh. So I grabbed the, um, it's uh, called Big Boy. Sorry, I dripped down the side there because I was not watching what I was doing. And not as a Primitivo from Italy. Mm. Um, so I found that was really interesting. And if they were trying to kind of make a real distinction in that, this is going to drink more like a California Zin. That's why we're called Mativo. And on this one, it is fragrant. I don't get a ton of berry on the nose on this one, but I get like a perfumey floral note, which is what I think is in a Primitivo and is kind of the more distilled. This has had oak on it because it's got, got like that sweetness note to it. But the floral and Maybe it's my glass. I don't know if Steve wants to weigh in and say if he smells floral in this one, but for me, it's like, it's perfumey, but mm. yet really right. Yeah, I like it too. It uh, has a nice balance to it. It's uh, some good acidity. It's got uh, a good smell to it. It's a uh, really well put together wine. Mm. And honestly, when I looked at the label, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm totally Is that sumo that wrestlers one. on the label? Because it, it really is. It's, I'm going to hold it up again. Again, apologize for the wine drippage there because I was yeah. pouring from the side. I'm not watching. Go for it. Oh. And uh, it's 20 bucks. 20 bucks. You find it in the Italy section of Inc. that joined us that aren't from New Brunswick. And uh, I don't know if Carol can hear me, but hi, if you're here. Thanks for joining us. Um, but this one, it's like, it's really mouthwatering. It, it like covers your, sorry, I can see my theater screen. <laughs> It has really good tannin structure and it's got that great acidity that you want there to kind of cut down like the sweetness of the ripe fruit. But I want to say there's like an herbal note, like right. a peppermint almost to it. At first I was thinking that it was because I brushed my teeth or it's not that. <laughs> but I think the, the peppery brambly thing is a definite varietal thing you always see with Zinfandel. I think particularly when it's made dry. Oh, and this is definitely dry. Like mm -hmm. my, I can feel my lips like wanting to pull back up onto my. Yeah, the difference here. is, it's, you know, when we were drinking reason last week, and I was talking about the varietal gives you certain aspects, but then the style and terroir are so different. Like I think it's more uh, style chosen style by Italian winemakers would maybe make a huge difference compared to how a Californian wine winemaker would treat it. You know, I've had Zinfandel from South Africa and Zinfandel from. There's actually Inniskillen makes an amazing Zinfandel in know BC, that. which I've never seen shipped across the country, but it always wins. I judge the Canadian wine words and it always wins uh, medals and it's excellent. And it's like the California style, but maybe a bit lighter alcohol, but more the very juicy style. Now, but the South African ones, I've, of course, they were smoky tasting because now uh, when I was in Lodi for different reasons and uh, a colleague of mine, we were just kind of like, oh, we have a free day until the conference starts. So we kind of just drove around and we went by, I think on the way to Sacramento, but we were going like maybe not the traditional highway route. And we were like both just stopped and we were like, let's do it. And there was like this big barrel out front that looked like it was an old wine uh, post later in the comments of uh, this event that we have what that winery was because for the life of me I was looking for it earlier and I can't think of it but in my head and it, uh, I will never forget that place even the lady just a young girl who was waiting on us and like lined up the glasses along the tasting thing and she's like this is our flagship wine and I started be thinking I'm like flagship and now I mean it's everywhere I didn't know at the time that everyone uses that. Was it but Zinfandel? Winemakers. It was a Zinfandel, yeah. And then uh, we asked permission actually to go into the field because the berries were missed. 
but the field that was right adjacent to the the tasting house was Zinfandel. And that was my first time actually picking a grape off a vine and putting it in my mouth. And all I got like this because it was so sour. Well, she like, like couldn't that. wait for it to get out. When, the, when Zinfandel is ripe, it's actually quite a delicious grape to eat. Mm -hmm. as, as it's from drinking the wine. Because it's like really juicy and not so tannic. Some of those wine grapes, like the really tiny ones in the tight bunches, like Cab Sold or whatever, and you'll, you'll, the grapes are so thick skinned and when you're chewing them, it's like bitter. You get the juicy taste, but then you get the, the skin and seeds. Right. But, now, Helen had an interesting, she has the Murphy Good yeah. one, the Liar's Dice. What are you finding uh, flavors so in with this that one? one? It's very, very much what Craig talked about. Um, I find it's like definitely blackberry. Um, and can you hold that bottle up once Absolutely. more? Absolutely. Yeah. I remember uh, this. Yeah. Blackberry, raspberry. Um, actually, it even says here. What does it say? Uh, Never read the notes. <laughs> I know, but I know, but it, I just <laughs> happen to be holding it straight in front of my face, but it says ras raspberry. I don't sense. know what the kick about the currants, but definitely blackberry and raspberry. Mm -hmm. mm. Excellent. And I think Leah has a primitivo. Would you care to talk about that one? Yeah. Yes. It's sure. So um, it's a 2016, and I was finding that there was a lot of, it, it's got a lot of raisin, so it seems like uh -huh. it's got a lot of age on it. The rim was quite brickish colored. It was, it was not a, it was not a beautiful red or deep red color that I was expecting. So, um, but it's, it's quite lovely. I think it, it needs to sit and open a little bit more because one of my first couple of mouthfuls were a bit rough, but as it's warmed up to the room temperature a little bit, it seems to have kind of mellowed. It's, it's lovely and smooth. It's got some tannin and some, and some weight to it as well. Thank the you. Zinfandel is not, it's not uh, typically, by most producers, I wouldn't say you think of it as a long aging wine. Mm -hmm. There are exceptions, but, um, yeah, I don't, I mean, I've had some old ones. The only old ones I've had that are like really blew me away were from Ridge. But Ridge is like, and I, I'll tell you, if you were in California and you're in San Francisco and you want to do a trip and visit one of the most amazing, historic and beautiful wineries with every wine, fantastic, Ridge is one. Okay. It's up on a hill and so it overlooks, the, it's amazing. I mean, the wines are, are not cheap, but when you're there, like you can have a picnic and buy a bottle and just at their price. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. But the, the interesting thing about them is a lot of their vineyards are what they call field blends. So they're like, go back to that when I was talking about the post, um, post phylloxera. And then they, and when you have European planting, like a lot of uh, vineyards in, in Europe are field blends too, uh, where there's different grapes mixed into the, in the same vineyard. So then when they harvest and make it, you, it's a mix of whatever. So those, uh, those famous ridge wines that age 20, 30 years or more, they all be, always have a bit of Cab Sauv in them and maybe some Merlot and others, right. Syrah. So they might be mostly Zinfandel, but they're, they're a testament to the power of blending. And I saw one here that we had one from a Sonoma coast, oh, I believe it was, oh. or Lake Sonoma, sorry, my apologies. Oh yes, I remember that one. Is uh, Vincent still what? here? Would he like to say anything He's about right his now. wine? Might be. Like I know in terms of uh, Primitivo, I am expecting things to be a bit more floral. So this, even though it's labeled Zinfandel and has a cool, you know, Sumo New Age label on it, I think it fits. Um, if you're looking at Primitivos, occasionally we get an influx here in New Brunswick, um, but usually they're just uh, Puglia, IGT, wine, um, Salise, uh, Salentino. Oh, yeah. Saliento, DOC, that's typically more premium area. It's a little bit more inland. Um, and so those would be uh, ones that you, Helen, Helen, sorry, is uh, drinking, occasionally shows up on our market. It's not always here. So it's always fun to try different things. And if you're interested in Zinfandels and Primitivo, uh, Puglia is known for their Negromeros, which also grow and become really like black skin grapes, really dark, really fruity, really jammy. And so if you're thinking that you can't party, mm -hmm. I think the one that I'm drinking right now, and I think Steve and uh, Stacy are drinking this one out too, but uh, I'm thinking like ribs. That's what I want to have with this. And it's a good thing I just can took you just hear me now? Oh yeah, tell me about that. What? Okay, sorry, I think what? I was muted. Oh, uh, yes, now we can hear you. Uh, it, it's, from, it's from California, it's a Zinfandel. Uh, it's my first time having a Zinfandel, or, or at least recently. 
And I would say it's pretty jammy with, with black fruit. Um, I don't know if there's residual sugar. Um, so it, it, I wonder if there's a little bit of residual sugar to it as well. But this one is actually delicious. It isn't something I would normally pick off the shelf. Did you buy that at really really Now, typically, I, I found that. Uh, oh, excellent. Can you hold it up a little bit closer just so I'm you can see the label? There? Yeah. Nice. I think it is it's dry. Yeah. Now, I do find that Zimadels, they, they are residual sugar. I mean, yeah. you're not like going five, six or anything like that, but it's still like, mm -hmm. you know, above three. That you sometimes even higher. What I like think. I, that, that Zin dry thing, really? when they say that, that, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if some of them are, are pushing all close to 10. I mean, you know, a lot of the red wines that are popular these days are 20 grams per liter. I won't start <laughs> bashing brands, but a there's, a lot of, there's a lot of abominations out there. But Zinfandel um, is able to handle a bit of it, I think, because of its acidity. And I remember that Lake Sonoma wine, we've had that a few times over the years at ABL, and it's always been a very good wine, in my opinion. And it's that's 2016, so it's had a little bit of age, and it's still fresh, so that's... And how much is that? I, I believe it was either 24 or 44. Yeah. I'll have to look it up, but I think it was 24. Uh, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty confident, but it was in the experience yeah. selection of ANBL. I'll look it up right now, well, actually. It's slightly more website. premium than, than some. You now, know, the one, the I one am just going to interrupt very, one quick yep. minute because our yes, last we tasting, we got cut off really abruptly because I didn't have the time. But if you have more than three people on, it automatically shuts down yeah. at 40 minutes. And I just wanted to say we are at the seven okay. minute right, out mark. Right and now. I looked up this one, it's $40. 40, okay. So, yeah. Well, I, I think it's the premium one. Yeah. And it, it, oh, I actually, uh, sorry, I actually, I live in Halifax, but I actually bought two cases oh. of this. It's a before it was 50% Oh, yes, off. yes, yes, yes. Okay. I know. Okay. I knew that's where you got it. Like I think hanging on my wall. And when Craig was like, I want to do a Zin, I like ran downstairs and I was like, oh, I drank it. Oh my 2012, God. 2012, eh? Yeah. And it's still, so still holding up? You know what? I, I find it amazing. No, that's good. Really, really yeah. good. No, it, it, I feel like that one, that brand is really good quality. Um, you probably can even get a couple more years well, out if of it's it, already, if, laying it down. If it's still drinking well now, then yeah, that makes me think you've got kind of like a, a winner, you know, you find these wines sometimes that for whatever reason that hang, that hang on well. You know, my one, this basic Ravenswood one, the 13 and a half percent, it's basically the only Zin that's, I think, always available now at the AMBL. It's kind of a core listing and others come and go, but this one always comes back. But you know, when I'm drinking it, it's, um, it's so easy drinking and because it's not, I, if I was doing a, a class like teaching students Zinfandel or a dinner where I wanted to use a typical Zinfandel in a California wine food pairing, mm -hmm. I wouldn't use it because it's, it, what it is is a good everyday red wine, but it isn't a, a teach, it would be a terrible teaching wine. Like on our SOM exam, if this would have been in the thing, I, I wouldn't have got it. Uh, whatever was in there was, uh, I can't remember this a long time ago, but we all guessed it as in, it was a typical Zin. So, you know, this one, I wish they would go uh, at the NBL and have the next level up from from Ravenswood, mm -hmm. the ones that are in the Occasionally, it, it does come out. Um, I think like it that. has a black yeah. label, and I think it can be available in the experience. Yeah. Just letting you know, their staff has been deployed to other yeah. stores. Okay. But yeah, like uh, I think Leah touched on color earlier and how she was surprised on her color. And mine, although it's really dark ruby, I'd probably still, it's kind of getting that brick note. Yeah, I don't think Zinfandel is typically, it's not black, like, unless they've got a lot of Saran there or something. It is typically that kind of, uh, what you're describing, I think is right on. Now, we have about four minutes left before this cuts us off. Does anyone have questions that mute and then ask? And I hope you're enjoying the sun. This is why I picked this spot, because I was just like, I can feel the sun I was outside in. having a beer before this. It's really warm on our patio right now. <laughs> We're going to have a campfire tonight. Oh, nice. Yeah. Oh, when's the next tasting? That's a great question. We've been trying to do them on Saturday. 